Are we up? Is, is it running? Do you have feed or what? Fuck, come on, man. Uh, there's nobody there. <laughs> hey, um, so check this out. How would you feel if creation was not done yet? Right? Um, what if creation is still being created? So here's what I want you to listen to. Isaiah 45, 7. This is what Isaiah 45, 7 says. God says, I form the light and I create darkness. That should make you realize that when you read Genesis and it says, now the earth was in this certain state, right? When we, when we see that, now the earth, what we don't realize is that God created that, that darkness, and then he forms the light from it. Okay? So, to us, we believe that we're living, you know, our world is done. It's created. We're here. We live in it. We're doing it, right? But aren't we in the process, through our interaction with each other, and through our beliefs and the things that we believe, are we not creating our world as time goes by? I mean, we've created a, you know, an ocean that's filled with plastic and junk. Uh, we believe that we've affected climate change, which is a possibility because, you know, while we're killing off the cows <laughs> because they fart too much, what about all the cars that run around when everything's going here and there? You know, we try to clean them up. Uh, I know this is an auto mechanic because we don't want noxious fumes to come out of them and stuff like that, so we make it so that it only emits what? Carbon dioxide. And then we even do what? We come up with what? Hydrogen fuel. Because there's so much hydrogen. Well, what happens when you split the hydrogen? You wind up with water and more greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide. So, in a certain sense, uh, we are creating a negative or a bad place. We're doing this as humans, right? We are made in God's image. And God said, I form the light and I create darkness. We have a choice to make. Are we going to form light in unity, peace, thinking together, working together, loving each other? Is that that hard? Or... Will we recreate darkness again? Creation went through a few, uh, a few loops, if you want to think that we're still not creating it. We think that, we call it global resets and so on, right? That we can see that this process of our world is resetting time and a time and a time. So... Here you go. You ready? The Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Then land appears. Then a garden. And then there's consumption of the fruit, nakedness, shame, and curse. What is the next uh, thing? God's Spirit. This is in when Noah Noah's time, the reset. They're in an ark, so his chosen people, God's good of the whole place, on the waters. Then the land appears, the mountains start to show. He plants a garden. He eats the fruit. His kids see him naked, and then there's shame and curse. And then we start over again. So that's just one loop 
it then starts to get more complicated as time goes by because there's more, uh, there's a little more to it. So the next time that we see this kind of spiritual reset, at least the one that I know because it's a part of history that I'm concerned with because I actually live in the U.S. So we had the Mayflower, these people that were persecuted for their beliefs that were going to start a new, you know, like a brand new thing. They, they took their faith to a new world, right? So they go across the waters, they get to the land, but the garden is inhabited by these what? Naked savages. And so what do they do? Well, their friends all show up and destroy this place. And what was weird is they were actually uh, eating corn. If we look in the book of Joseph, what does he say? 11, my corn, your corn sheets bowed to my corn sheets, and so on. Your sheets bow down to worship mine. That 11 and 1 ratio, and it caused all this trouble. We see other 11 and 1s. We see the 12 disciples. There was 11, and then there was the one bad guy, the one bad apple. Okay. Now we see that scientists believe that we're in a simulation and that us observing a, a scientific experiment changes what this experiment actually turns out to be. Are we living in a simulation? Or are we living in a universe that as creators designed in, in, in the image of God, that what we see affects everything. Now think of things like movies, like the book of Eli, where he does what? He delivers a Bible and he'll open it up and there's nothing in it. Only the blind people could see it. The people with their eyes closed. Is that a coincidence they made that movie? They made a movie called The Matrix. That oddly has all these Nebuchadnezzar and Bible references and so on. Is that a coincidence? I play a game called Gears of War. Where I'm fighting locusts. That come up out of the ground, out of the abyss. They're everywhere. Some of the other people in the uh, in this movie are, or in this game, are uh, Sergeant Phoenix. Uh, there's places, the House of Sovereigns. The final battle in this game is called a Pale Horse, and you have to kill Ram, sacrifice a ram. Even even this bipolar existence uh, exists where uh, Abraham was concerned. Because his firstborn son, his firstborn was Ishmael. And God, as he went, what? Into the desert place, into the deserted zone. God said, I will make him a great nation too. You'll be a wild donkey of a man, every hand against hand, his brother against brother and whatever. That's the darkness or the chaos. What is the promise that we're supposed to get? peace and goodness and so on. Think about it, guys. I love you. I gotta check my coffee. Shalom.